Hey friends, I'm Chris Schufel with Chris in the Classroom, and today we just got a... The world is full of all kinds of coping skills and stress relief techniques and self-help strategies these days. And it makes sense. I mean, people of all ages seem to be more stressed out than ever before. And they're pulled in so many different directions between school and work and sports and activities and family life and just so many other events. Man, y'all need to calm down. But there's so many strategies out there that work but you can't really do them when you're sitting in class or at the dinner table or in a place where there's a ton of other people around. Things like exercise, laughing, journaling, singing, and listening to music, they're all great ways to handle stress and managing your emotions. But obviously, there's a time and place for those things. So today, I'm gonna give you a couple of things that you can do to calm down and de-stress when you're in class in a quiet place or in a situation where you just can't do some of those other typical things. First, massage your ears. I know it sounds weird, but your ears are full of nerves and nerve endings that are connected to the rest of your body. When you can just sit there and gently massage, rub and pull and tug at all parts of your ear, even behind them, you know, the place that mom always wants us to make sure we scrub, <laughs> you're sending signals to the rest of your body and it will help calm you down. A fun thing to do too is to gently unroll the top part of your ear. Not only does it feel pretty cool, but it also helps with thinking clearer and focusing a bit better. Second, a common thing to do is breathing, deep breathing, and picturing certain things in your mind. And that's great, but I'm going to add a little something to that. When you do deep breathing and, and picture things in your mind, close your eyes and touch right here above your eyebrows and just hold it for a minute or two. If you've ever noticed people when they get upset or stressed, they usually put their head in their hands and they rub right here above their eyebrows. Well, that's a natural stress relief point on your body. So when you combine that with deep breathing and picturing good things in your mind, it really works wonders. Next, rub your hands together. Again, this is something that people already naturally do when they get stressed. Actually, studies have shown that babies do this when they're in their mom's tummy as a way to calm down. But here's a little secret to make it even more effective. Use some hand lotion. It makes your skin soft and smooth and it really helps you to squeeze out some of that tension without hurting your hands. Also, there's some really special calming spots in the palms and on the pad of your hands that you can rub and really focus on too. And it really feels good. <laughs> Number four, drop some cold water or put a cold compress on your wrists. This helps to kind of mentally separate you from the stressful thoughts and feelings, and it kind of wakes up your senses and brings you back into control. Just ask if you can slip out to the restroom or to the nurse's office for a moment. Another one is to ask yourself and answer what I call the three resilience questions in this order. One, how could this be worse? That allows you to realize that while your situation may not be good, it's not as bad as it could be. And you can actually be thankful for that. <laughs> Two, why won't this matter in the future? This helps you understand that this won't last forever. It's only temporary. This too shall pass. Focus on what things will be like when it does pass. And three, how could this turn out for my good? What can you learn from this? What can you change? What can you do different? How can this improve your life? How can this situation make you a better, stronger, and more resilient person? And finally, sorry teachers, chewing gum. Now, I know students are going to be all fired up about this one. And teachers, you're probably going to hate me for even suggesting it. But at the discretion of you, teacher... <laughs> Chewing gum has been shown in many studies to help the body release certain chemicals 
to lower stress levels. It's almost like squeezing a stress ball with your jaw. <laughs> now, teachers, I've seen this work in classes many, many, many times over the years. Just make sure you set some ground rules with it if you choose to allow students to do it. Like, chew with your mouth closed. No popping bubbles. The gum has to stay in your mouth at all times. Don't let it cause any class disruptions. And of course, don't abuse the privilege by pretending to be stressed just so you can chew gum. But like I said, it's up to the teacher and kids, you gotta respect your teacher's decision. But it does work. Well, that's it, friends. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to learn more about the greatest social emotional learning, conflict resolution, and resilience training program for students that's out there today, you got to check out the Squabbles program. And if you want me to come and impact your school or community, either in person or virtually, just let us know and we'll make it happen. And until next time, class is dismissed.